Hey everybody, in this lesson what we want to talk about is safety. So lesson number one, safety. Safety is the number one priority of this course. So what does each of these symbols represent? What dangers are associated with each symbol? And if we were not careful with the objects, if, if we were not careful with the following objects that have these symbols. So we know that these things stands for WIMIS. WIMIS is Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. That's where the WHMIS comes from. Now what we have here are eight symbols that represent different dangers we will have in the lab. The first one in which we have, the first symbol is going to be, A is compressed gas. Now what compressed gas means is under pressure, and because it's under pressure, it can lead to explosion. The second symbol stands for flammable. And these are objects that can catch on fire easily. C is oxidizing material. Now this is different from flammable. What an oxidizing material is, is an object in which when it does um, react or catch on fire, it will release oxygen. And why is that bad? Well, the reason why that will be bad is that what does a fire need to sustain itself? It needs a spark, it needs a fuel, but it also needs oxygen. And usually when you try to put out a fire, you want to put it out based on taking away its oxygen. But in this case, if it's producing its own oxygen, it takes a lot more time to try to stop it. For D, E, and F, they're actually part of one category, but we're going to separate them into different ones, which which we're going to call poison, is the first one. It's the skull and bone one. Poison is, it can kill you quickly. Like, for example, rat poison, bleach, anything that can do harm to you suddenly is poison. E is toxic. Toxic is kills you slowly. Or kills you after repeated exposure. Like, for example, asbestos is an example of that, or lead. We also have biohazardous. Hazardous. And these are, they can spread disease. So you might see this in a hospital where they put the reused needles. The next one right here is corrosive. Corrosive means it can burn through objects. And the very last one we have here is dangerously reactive. And that, that means this thing is something that could react violently or explode. Now these women's symbols came on in the 80s. And since then, we have had a lot of changes in science and in the world. So in 2015, Canada came out with a new set of women's symbols that look like this. You might notice that a lot of symbols still look exactly the same. Like flammable is still there. Oxidizing is still there. Poison is still there. Corrosive is still there. Compressed gas is still there. And of course, biohazard is still there. But what has changed now is that dangerously reactive is now exploding bomb. That has changed. Toxic has now been separated into two categories because these health hazards are one that may cause or suspected of causing serious health effects. Well, exclamation mark is may cause less serious health effects. Of course, the last one they added is environmental ones. That is a terrible color to use. Environmental, which I will circle in red. This one is may cause damage to the aquatic environment. So as you see, we introduce four new symbols to add on to the old one. We also made sure now that they have a red triangle to distinguish them from the old circular one. But of course these are symbols that you don't see at home. You see these in labs, in commercial settings, because at home we have what we call the hazardous household product symbol, the HHPS. So these are the hazardous 
household product symbols. And these are symbols that you see on regular appliances and regular um, things you buy in the store, in which they separate them into four categories, poison, corrosive, flammable, and explosive. And the severity of how dangerous they are are based on their shape. An octagon means it's danger. That means it's the most severe one. A diamond is warning. And a triangle is caution. So that if you have, for example, a octagon with the skull and bones poison, you would say this is danger, poison. So you know that this thing is very, very poisonous to you. But if you see caution and poison, then what you know is it's caution, poison, and that it can cause some um, health effects to you. Same thing with explosive. If it's danger, explosive, what that means is that it is very highly explosive. But it's caution explosive, that means it can still explode, but not as serious. Now we also have safety equipments that are available in labs. The first one, of course, we know what it is. It's the fire extinguisher. And these are for large fires. Now you must be trained to use a fire extinguisher. But if you're not trained and the fire is smaller, you can use what we call a fire blanket. And these are for smaller fires, like ones on lab benches. The next one we have here is eye wash station. This is for whenever you have um, a foreign object in your eyes, so as to wash out eyes. What you do is, these two right here are for putting your eyes into in a sense and water will spray out like a hose. Now in some schools and workplaces instead of a eye wash station like this that comes from the tap you have a bottle that gets put into your eye and thus you squeeze the water into your eye. The next type right here is called the emergency shower. And this is to wash chemicals off body. The next thing right here is called the neutralization kit. And this is to neutralize an acid or base. So sometimes if you have an acid or base that has spilt and you can't just dump water or wipe it off in, with a cloth, you need to neutralize it first. And this is where the neutralization kit comes in hand. The next thing right here is called a fume hood. A fume hood is just like the hood you have at home on top of your stove, but you call those a range hood. And this is used to suck up any fumes you have in an experiment to remove fumes from the experiment. Such as, for example, if there's a very powerful acid that if it comes in contact with air, it can actually make the air corrosive. You'll do that experiment in a fume hood. The next one right here is called the broken glass container. And this is where you're going to put all your broken glass. Because broken glass cannot go down the garbage. Because a custodian, for example, might pick up that bag and the glass can pierce through the bag and thus cut someone. So that's why you have a broken glass container to store broken glass. And the last one are goggles. Goggles are to protect your eyes at all time. And goggles must be worn every lab and at all times because you don't want to lose your eyes. Your eyes, your sense of sight is probably one of the most uh, one of the most important senses you have. So the next thing we're talking about is different scenarios we have and how do we deal with them? So the first one is, what if you have a chemical spill? What is the harm of that? It can cause burns. It's precisely chemical burns. So that means if a chemical spill, what do you do? You notify teacher and step back. Because based on what the chemical is, you, don't, you might not know how to deal with it. 
Next one is broken glass. This can cause cuts. So this is, depending on the scenario, first one. If it has chemicals, treat as a spill. Okay, so if the broken glass has chemicals, you want to treat it like a chemical spill. Go and notify the teacher and step back. But no chemicals, just sweep it up and put it into broken glass container. Burning chemicals. Burning chemicals can cause chemical burns. This one is again, just like a chemical spill, notify teacher and step back. Number four, fire in a container. So this one can cause you, give you burns. So what do you do? Well, when there's a fire in a container, you want to put a lid on it. So what does that mean? Well, at home, if you have a pan on fire, you will put a lid on it to take away the oxygen. In a lab, a lot of the equipments that you have don't have lids. So instead, you want to find something that can be a lid, such as, for example, a watch glass that can put on top of a beaker to put out the fire. Number six, fire and lab bench can cause burns. And this one, you can't, there's no lid that could be put on top of a lab bench. This one is use fire blanket. The next one right here, uncontrolled fire can also cause burns. But this one's a little more difficult. The first one is use fire extinguisher if you're trained. But the second thing, evacuate and pull fire alarm. If you get chemicals on hand, you, this can cause chemical burns. So in this case, what you want to do is you want to use neutralization kit. If it's an acid or base, and wash with fast running water. Now, the next hazard here is smelling chemicals. In terms of smelling chemicals, this can cause nasal damage, especially if it's a chemical that can burn your nasal passages. So what you want to do for this one, use wafting technique. Always want to use wafting technique. Bring the smell towards you. That will dilute it right there. The last one, Bunsen burner, this can cause a fire. So what should you do? You should have a few things. Turn off main gas. If there's ever any issue with the Bunsen burner, you want to always turn off the main gas first. Now, the last thing we want to talk about is what other rules should you know for this class? Well, the first major rule that you should always know is this. Be prepared. If you're prepared for a lab, you know what to expect. That is one of the most important things that you can do. Number two, no fooling around. Because you don't know, sometimes, for example, you could bump into someone, that person might have an acid in their beaker, and that now acid will spill. So there's no fooling around. Tie long hair back. Wear closed toe shoes. And last but not least, remove dangling clothing. So that is the end of our lesson. As always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.